In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to simplify algebraic expressions, particularly those that contain irrational exponents. Now, if you want to pause the video and you want to try these two examples, feel free. But before we do that, let's go over some properties of exponents. When you multiply two terms that have the same base, the base being x, you can add the exponents. So this is equal to x raised to the 2 plus 3, or x to the fifth power. And to see why that's the case, x squared means that you're multiplying two x variables together. x cubed is equivalent to multiplying three x variables together. In total, you have five x variables being multiplied, so we get x to the fifth power. So when you multiply terms with the same bases, you can add the exponents. Now when you're dividing, if the base is the same, you can subtract the exponents. So this is 5 minus 2, which is 3. And you can see it this way. x to the fifth power means that you're multiplying 5x variables together. x squared is just x times x. You could cancel 2 of the x variables on the top and the bottom of the fraction. And that leaves you with 3x variables left over, which is x to the third. Now what about this? What happens when you raise one exponent to another? What's x squared raised to the third power? When you raise one exponent to another, you need to multiply the two exponents. So this is 2 times 3, which is x to the sixth power. Another way to see this, this 3 means that you have 3 x squareds. And each x squared term is basically x times x. So notice that we have six x variables being multiplied to each other, which is x to the sixth power. Now, what is the difference between this expression and this one? What would you say is the difference? So here, notice that the 3 applies to the x squared term. So that tells us that we have 3x squared. And we're basically adding 2 3 times which is 2 times 3, or 6. Now, in this case, the 3 doesn't apply to the x squared. It only applies to the 2. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So this is x to the 8, not x to the 6. So notice the difference. When you have parentheses, the 3 applies to everything inside the parentheses. If we don't have parentheses around the x squared, the 3 only applies to the 2. because that's going to be important when solving this particular problem. Now, before we do this, what is the answer for this one? What's 2 to the third raised to the fourth power versus 2 to the third to the fourth, written like that? In this case, we need to multiply 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12, so we get 2 to the 12. Now, for this one, the 4 only applies to the 3. So we're raising 3 to the 4th power. So we're multiplying 3 4 times. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So this is 2 to the 81. Notice that the results are significantly different. So we're going to apply that to this problem. So here, notice that the 2 applies to everything inside. So we're raising one exponent to another. Therefore, we need to multiply these two. So this becomes 7. And then 2 times radical 2 is just 2 radical 2. 
Now, something that we can do here is we can go back to this form. So, for instance, let's say if you have a squared raised to the third power, you can switch to 3 and 2. So you can write it as a cubed to the second power because 2 times 3 and 3 times 2, they both multiply to 6. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to convert it into this format. You can just basically swap these two because they both multiply to 2 radical 2. So now we have 7 squared. 7 squared is 7 times 7, which is 49. And so this is going to be our final answer. 49 square root 2. Now what about this one? Notice that the 2 does not apply to the 7. The 2 only applies to the square root of 2. And what is the square root of 2 squared? This means that we're multiplying 2 square root 2's. 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So this part here, this entire exponent, simplifies to 2. So we get 7 squared, which is 49. So we have two different answers for these two problems. Now, let's move on to the next two examples. What's 5 raised to the square root of 2 raised to the square root of 2? In this case, the square root of 2 applies to everything inside. In that case, we can multiply these two exponents. So this becomes 5 square root 2 times square root 2. Square root 2 times square root 2 is square root 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. So that's the answer for that example. Now what about the next one? What's 9 square root 3 times 9 square root 3? Notice that the base, the bases are the same, which means we could add the exponents. This is like multiplying x squared times x cubed, which is x to the 2 plus 3. So this is 9 square root 3 plus square root 3. This is 1 square root 3 plus 1 square root 3. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get 2 square root 3. Now we could separate these two numbers, which are multiplied like this, we can write it as 9 squared raised to the third. So keep in mind, if you have a raised to the 3 times 4, you can break it up to a cubed to the fourth power, or you can say a to the fourth raised to the third power. In all cases, it's equal to a to the 12. Now, 9 squared is 81. So we get 81 square root 3. An important property keep, to keep in mind is that when the exponents are the same, you could multiply the bases while keeping the exponents the same. So we could have gotten the final answer by multiplying 9 times 9, which is 81. And then the exponent will remain square root 3. Go ahead and try these two problems. So in this case, notice that the exponents are the same. So we could just multiply the bases. 7 times 7 is 49. So this is 49 square root 3. Here, once again, the exponents are the same, even though the bases are different, but that's okay. So this is going to be 5 times 4, which is 20. So we get 20 square root 3. Go ahead and try this one. 8 square root 3 raised to the second power. And you could try this as well. 5 square root 3, I mean square root 2, raised to the square root 3. And finally, 5 square root 7 times 5 square root 3. So feel free to pause the video and try those examples.
So for the first one, we're raising one exponent to another. We can multiply the two exponents. So this becomes 8 raised to the 2 times the square root of 3. Or we could just reverse them and write it this way. 8 squared raised to the square root 3. 8 squared, which is 8 times 8, that's 64. So the final answer for this one is 64 square root 3. Now for the next one, we have an exponent raised to another exponent, so we can multiply them together. So this is 5 square root 2 times square root 3. Because these square roots have the same index number, which is an invisible 2, we can multiply what's inside of the square root. So that's 2 times 3, which is 6. So our final answer for that one is 5 square root 6. Now for the next one, we have the same bases but different exponents. So all we can do is just add the exponents. So it's simply 5 raised to the square root 7 plus square root 3. And we can't simplify this any further, so uh, we're just going to have to leave our answer like this. Now, what would you do if you saw a problem that looked like that? How would you solve it? Now, if you remember, a squared times a to the third is basically a to the fifth power. But imagine going backwards. a to the fifth, which we know it's a to the three plus two, we could break this up to a cubed times a squared. That's what we want to do here. So we're going to convert the addition of exponents, which is what we have here, to the multiplication of two numbers with the same base. So we can write this as 5 to the third times 5 to the square root of 7, which is what we just did here. We basically split it into two parts through multiplication. Now we could do the same for the bottom. So we can write that as 5 to the first power times 5 raised to the square root 7. Now these two we could cancel. When you divide two things that are the same, you get 1. So now we're left with 5 to the third power over 5 to the first power. And when you divide, if the bases are the same, you could subtract the exponents. So it's 3 minus 1, which is 2. 5 squared, or 5 times 5, that's 25. So that's going to be our answer for that one. Now let's work on a similar example. Let's say we have 3 square root 5 plus 2 over 3 square root 5 minus 2. Go ahead and try this example. So this one is very similar to the last one. First, let's convert the sum of two exponents into the multiplication of two numbers with those exponents. So this is 3 square root 5 times 3 to the second power. And beneath that, we have 3 square root 5 times 3 to the negative 2. So just like before, we could cancel these two because they're the same. And then we'll be left with 3 squared over 3 to the negative 2, which we could subtract the top exponent, 2, minus the bottom exponent, negative 2. So these two negative signs, two negatives will make a positive, so this becomes 2 plus 2, which is 4, and 3 to the fourth power. That's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. These two 3's equal 9, and the other two 3's equal 9, which is 81. We could also write it as 3 squared raised to the second power, because 2 times 2 is 4, 3 squared is 9, 9 squared is 81. So that's the answer for that one. Now, let's move on to our next example. 7 square root 5 plus 2 divided by 49. How can we simplify this one? Just like before, we have the sum of two exponents, so we could expand it through multiplication. So this is 7 square root 5 times 7 squared over 49. 
Now, 7 squared, which is 7 times 7, that's 49. And notice that we could cancel the two 49s. So our answer is going to be 7 square root 5. Here's a similar problem that you could try. Let's say if we have 2 square root 13 plus 3 divided by 8. Go ahead and take a minute, pause the video, try that problem. So let's expand the term on top. So this is 2 square root 13 times 2 to the third power divided by 8. And 2 to the third, that's 2 times 2 times 2. You're multiplying three twos, which is 8. So now we could cancel the 8s. And that's just going to give us 2 square root 13. 